The cartel of the world's oil producing nations says it sees a decade of growing demand ahead despite the climate emergency. Releasing its world oil outlook for 2021, OPEC says orders for crude deliveries are roaring back after the economic slowdown that followed the pandemic. But the group has added that consumer behavior is having an impact on oil prices, with less car use overall and a switch to electric vehicles. The group says that within two years, the global economy will be consuming 1.7 million more barrels of oil a day than at present. That means by the end of the decade, total daily use is expected to top 106 million barrels. That will only level off in 2035. However, the International Energy Agency that advises governments on energy policy has warned this figure must be cut by a third if the Paris climate goals of zero emissions by 2050 are to be met, which would mean capping output at 72 million barrels a day. Well, Cornelia Meyer is an independent economist and energy analyst, and she joins us now. Thanks so much indeed for being back on the show with us, Cornelia. So we're seeing oil prices at three-year highs. Why are they so high, and can they go higher? Well, they absolutely can go higher. They are so high because demand has really come roaring back after the pandemic. And OPEC has been rather slow in, you know, incrementally releasing barrels. Let's not forget they cut about 10 percent of, of um, oil production, 9.7 million barrels a day, um, April 2020, when, you know, when, when, when everything went bad because of the pandemic. And they are now slowly but steadily releasing 400,000 barrels a day and um, putting it back on the market. They go slow because there's so many things we don't know, like will there be fourth waves, fifth waves of the pandemic and so on. So the demand, the supply hasn't come back quite as quickly as demand has come back. Well, let me just pick up on that point, because of course, we are seeing increased demand. Now the economy is uh, bouncing back. But can producers actually meet that surge that uh, in oil that that increased demand has triggered? Um, yes, producers can producers can um, can can do that because let's not forget, especially in OPEC, they're still they still they still have much more capacity than what they're actually producing. So there is spare capacity there. They're just being a little bit conservative in putting barrels back on the market, which is understandable. At some stage, we will meet more investment, and therein lies a problem because with all the um, ESG requirements a lot of banks are no longer willing to fund upstream and even downstream investment in oil and gas so what does this continued demand for oil mean for climate goals they're incompatible aren't they well, they are and they aren't. What it means is we need to be careful in, in how much oil we, con we, we consume. We also need to be looking more at other technologies like um, um, CCUS, you know, carbon capture, usage and storage. Um, the circular carbon economy and so on. We can't just, you know, it's, there's not such a thing as one silver bullet that will hit it all. We need to look at demand and we need to look at when we, how we deal with CO2 emissions in demand and in supply. We also need to look at um, energy efficiency. So, yes, we can, we can get CO2 emissions down, but we need to be willing to engage in other technologies. Now, look Looking again at the OPEC report, I would say one thing, you know, um, yes, OECD countries do drive more towards electric vehicles, but the demand for oil is growing increasingly towards non-OECD economies. And, you know, they may not have the infrastructure prerequisite for EVs and so on. Well, you mentioned electric vehicles there. Do you think there will be a point where that uh, increasing reliance on them, that increasing adoption of them, starts to have an impact on how much oil we use? Oh, it, it already is having an increase, an impact. It's just the, 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 the rise in demand will go up slower than it would go up otherwise if we didn't have EVs. Let's not forget, you know, we still have a growing world population and we have emerging economies where people want mobility. And at this point, it's the combustion engine that will get them there. And, you know, looking at the, the, the expense of the infrastructure that is required for, um, for 
or more electric vehicles. It, it will be some time off until they can afford to really put in that infrastructure. OPEC seems very clear, though, that oil will still be our main source of energy for years to come, particularly in developing countries. How can they be helped to transition away from oil? Well, as I said, it will, it will be difficult to transition away from oil. They will transition away from oil, but for mobility, oil is still where it's at, especially for these developing countries, for these emerging economies, because they lack the, simply they lack the dollars to invest in the, in the infrastructure, you know, that is required for EVs and the, the power generation and so on. So, so we are there. And as I'm, I'm coming back to what I said initially, we need to see things not just as, oh, we're using more oil. We need to see, okay, if we use more oil, what can we do in order to capture carbon? What can we do, you know, when we produce it? There will be hydrogen as well. How can we produce blue hydrogen, green hydrogen? So we just need to look at things a little bit more broad-minded than just, oh, we're using oil and that's a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing if we have other technologies going in parallel. Cornelia Meyer, thanks very much indeed for talking.